to the bonus level. Hello again, and welcome to level 19 of the Bonus Level Podcast. I, of course, am one of your hosts, Jack. Alongside with me, as usual, is Josh and Luch. Go ahead and say hello. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. (laughs) Welcome back to another week, another episode, and another level. Thanks for joining us. Um, If you can think back about two weeks, um, we talked about free will and the mysteries therein in level 17 and we thought we had defeated the final boss at the end we thought that it was over but in true storybook fashion we got sued by uh matrix (laughs) (laughs) the boss is back and has unfinished business with us and this week we're going to be talking about the mysteries of the great simulation theory (gasps) and if you're unfamiliar with that um there is a school of thought and some people very so-called smart people in the world um some of which are actually idiots uh will (laughs) actually tell you that it is more uh more likely that we are all living in a giant simulation that we're not actually living in base reality than it is for us to be real life human beings and um, we're going to discuss that. And Josh has a lot of things to say about it. <laughs> <laughs> when do I not have a lot of things to say? Ah, that's true. That's true. Um, but first, before we get into that, do you guys remember what we ultimately concluded with Free Will in level uh, 17? Uh, that we agreed to disagree. That we agreed to disagree. <laughs> um, yeah, that's true. Well, no, I mean, because I, I felt like, you know, in a lot of ways that, that we, you know, understood where everyone was coming from there, you know, you seem to agree that a lot of, you know, the the nature and nurture of, of where we come from influences our decisions in the future a lot. But uh, to what end, uh, to what point, I don't know if we ever, you know, finally agreed on on that mm-hmm. okay yeah you're right luch do you remember where, where you rested no no <laughs> you do not remember i do um, not remember my friend so if if that's the case if you don't remember if i were to ask you right now does free will exist what's your answer the simulation tells me to say no <laughs> Wait a minute. Does that mean? <laughs> oh my god. Does that mean? Yeah. No. Free will definitely exists. I think. Okay. So you. Yeah. That's right. You. You decided that it, it, it. That you didn't want to be controlled by the man. I mean. Right. No. Because if I. I mean. If. If I. If the man was controlling me, I'd. I'd be pretty upset. Why? Well, that I. I wish he'd let me win the lottery. <laughs> if, if i'm being controlled you guys suck <laughs> yeah right <laughs> it's like this is the path you chose for no 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 day? no no no. they found me the right woman they just need to give me the winning lottery ticket oh, well gotcha. that's what i'm saying like they're like they just give you some wins but they can't give you more like i have like, a good i have the best cat i have the best wife just need that lottery i heard you were on a pretty awesome podcast uh, they're they they they're okay. I mean, it, it's up for debate. I'll introduce them to you guys sometime. Nice. Who's that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, your podcast friends. I got you. <laughs> um, understandable. So, let's kick off this topic by asking the upfront question, right? Because ultimately, we're going to discuss it. We're going to go, you know, go back and forth, and then maybe we settle on a. This is how, what we actually think, or maybe somebody's mind gets changed. Mm-hmm. But right off the cuff, do you think? Josh, that this is one big computer simulation controlled by a higher power or a higher intelligence. Okay, so this is why I have a lot to talk about this. Okay, well, I asked you a yes or no question, <laughs> so... Um, it's, I think, first, that we need to distinguish <laughs> as far as what type Josh, of simulation Josh, we're Josh. even talking about. Josh, <laughs> Josh, so... Yeah, y- y- Josh, Josh. 
I'll I'll lean J- towards Josh, yes. Josh. I'll lean towards yes. So we'll, if okay. you guys have other stuff you want to discuss, <laughs> I'll just leave it at that, and we'll, I'll talk in a minute. But yes, I'm gonna say yes. Uh, Luke, he, what about he can't, you? He can't hold it in. No, no, no. I don't believe so. No. Okay. Neither do I. I mean, the simulation uh, called life. There's there's a hmm. while I think that there are greater forces at play and greater powers at play that end up controlling and influencing what we consider, you know, coincidences and things like that. I ultimately do not believe that this is a giant simulation of any sort. Aside from the fact, right, that. So, so simulation in theory Mm -hmm. and in definition, meaning that like, Okay, so first of all, in order to let's just let's back up a second. In order to mm-hmm. talk about it, what's the definition of simulation, right? Yeah. Um so uh, if if I can uh if you can take the the muzzle off for a second, I can uh kind of go into a beginner's guide or explanation i think to to at least get everyone of the on the word? same page do you know what the word simulation means that defined by the dictionary defined by the dictionary yeah um it says you know, I have a it says the production of a computer model or so, of something especially for the purpose of study okay my dictionary just says earth so <laughs> weird <laughs> um <Mine> so says <clears throat> with that connectivity issues wait <laughs> wait a minute um no so with that definition in mind mm-hmm. i think that you can replace words in that sentence and be like oh well if you believe in god then god could be the higher intelligence and the earth and life is actually a giant simulation run by him in a way of you know he, we we were all created by him and so life is one giant you know let's see what happens with these mm-hmm. humans sort of deal. So that's my take on it. Okay. That's well, as what... close as of a simulation that I will, I will believe. That yeah. We're in. Okay. So let me kind of, cause I, when I knew that we were going to be talking about this, I, I watched uh, a lot of videos by lots of different people and, and stuff like that. And one of the biggest ones that stood out to me was the explanation done by Neil deGrasse Tyson. Um, <sighs> So, so basically, <laughs> like I said, <laughs> I feel like, you know, when we're talking about simulations, that there could be a lot of different ones. Anyone that's known me and talked to me has seen me on multiple occasions where we'll just be hanging out, doing whatever. I'll get quiet. I'll look over at you and I'll whisper, fucking Matrix. Because some weird event happened that made me go like, I don't believe that I'm in this world right now. <laughs> I think that's different than the simulation of, of what Neil deGrasse Tyson and, and you know um, some of the other uh, scientists or or whoever are kind of talking about. But the way that they explained it um, was like Tyson was talking about the fact of you know we have a couple of paths that the human race race can can take over you know. The, the course of history. Um, one of the paths will be is if, you know, we're eventually going to get to the point where our technology keeps getting better and better and better to we're at the point where we can run a simulation on a computer of, you know, big bang to now um, where the computer's running everything, all different types of simulations, um, you know, you can change things up and go, okay, well, I want to see what the world would have looked like in, you know, this year if Hillary would have won. What would, you know, or what happened if, if Trump would have won? Like, let's say next year that Trump does something crazy and we get nuked and then all of a sudden, you know, like the the world ends and they go, oh, mm-hmm. okay, well, that simulation shows, well, what would have happened if Trump would have got elected president? So let's run one and see what it would, would have been like with you know, Hillary or whatever it may be. Um and so how he explains the probability of us being in uh, a simulation is basically, like I said, um, one of the options would be that we advance technologically to the point where we can actually run one. Um, other option is we go extinct before we ever get there. 
So you have one of those two options, basically. You either yeah. go extinct before you get to that point, or you get powerful enough technologically that we can run simulations. Now that we're at the point that we can run simulations as a society, let's say that you have only enough power that 10 computers in the entire world can run simulations. So now you have one world running 10 different simulations. Well, now in those simulations you could have other people running simulations inside them because maybe they don't know they're in a simulation or whatever. So it just, it, it compounds upon itself multiple times to where, I mean, let's just be, um, you know, conservative and say that there's a, a thousand simulations being run. You know, he uses the example of, you know, millions or billions, but let's say that you just stopped at a thousand. So now if you take, all those 1000 simulations and you take your one real world and you stuck them all up on a wall and you threw a dart. He's like, what's the probability that you're going to hit the actual real life world compared to one of the simulations? He goes, the, the chance of you being in a simulation is so high that he's like, it's arrogant to think that you would not be in a simulation. <laughs> um, to me, where I stand on this and why, like I, I was some, you know, I didn't want to just give a black and white answer in the beginning is because that kind of thing, while I understand his logic behind it and like, it, it makes sense. Yes. If I don't know when you, when you see it all written out and, and drawn out, it's like, okay, that makes sense. But still at the same time, it's, it's hard for your mind to, to process. It, it just kind of seems like another one of those fun sci-fi things. Like I love, yeah. you know, alien craft you know think about alien stuff or bigfoot stuff or whatever but at the same time like deep down i know it's it's fun and i like thinking about it same way with gotcha. the matrix matrix i probably believe more than almost anything because i've been a diehard matrix fan since the first time i saw the movie and was like <laughs> this just explains everything in life like everything in life can be explained by this movie this is what's going on that you know even with that deep down i'm like i don't really if someone had a gun to my head, I wouldn't say that that was true. Yeah. Um, but I understand where he's coming from, where my, <laughs> some of my issues from it is some of that simulation um, feels different because like the, the reasons why I believe in, in things like the matrix or what makes me think that the matrix is real is things like with um, uh, like something happens, uh, you know, I think about something and then like the next day, that event comes true. I mean, we've talked about that a lot, um, you know, all of us having those kind of feelings. Um, but I mean, just like with my, my parents the other day, my mom was talking about um, that uh, she was working on her computer. She was like, man, you know, I've been working on this same computer for a long time now. I really need to, you know, I think it'd be nice if I started looking uh, for a new computer or something like that. The next day, her hard drive just completely fried. She lost everything. Didn't get a chance oh to switch things over to a new computer or anything. The, they had to ship off their hard drive. There's a company saying that they could, you know, try recovering things, but they got to do it in like a clean room. It's like $500 to even look at it, you know, kind of crazy stuff. But it happened like literally the day after she's like, man, my computer seems to really mm -hmm. be getting, you know, like th that kind of stuff just goes, all right, like, there can only be so much coincidence before I start going like bullshit. What's going on here? <laughs> you know? Yeah. So um, where I, I feel like the simulations that, um, that Tyson talk about aren't really as much as like me having control of my situations or surroundings, like what they do in the matrix, but more just, you know, they're running, like we're just a, you know, an ant in an ant hill running because the master told us to. Um, yeah. That with that, I don't like that as much. Deep down, I think my rebellious nature makes me want to fight that some. But um, <laughs> but hopefully that kind of explains. I wanted to get out, and I know I went on a, a long little rant and monologue, but I wanted you guys to understand um, when I hear the word simulation, this is what I think of. So that mm -hmm. way we're all at least all on the same page as that, if that makes sense. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Well, Luch, um, what about you? And I'll kind of fill in the blanks. <laughs> in terms of what? I told you I don't believe that we're in a simulation. I know. I know. So what do you think about what he said? Um, I mean, the pa the part where he said, uh, I forget what that guy's name you told me, but uh, Neil. 
uh, that it's arrogant to think that we're not in a simulation. It's kind of arrogant to think that we are in a simulation. Well, how yeah. so? Well, one thing I can say is, is that first of all, if there was a simulation that was running it, I don't think we have the technology right now to do something on that massive scale and give everybody its own self-conscious. I mean, AI is, is out there 100%. Mm. But the only thing I can think of is is that simulations would be for running things that are possible, not what have happened. Well, and so, and what he was explaining with it is, you know, we're not at the point that we could do that now. The type of supercomputer that it would we would have to have to do that is way beyond our powers now. Exactly. Like they, we have blueprints towards those kind of things. They said that we do have concepts towards them. But what he's talking about is in time like uh you know technologically we're going to eventually progress to the point where we can do that and if eventually. we can't if we get to that point where we can do it then it's either there's a 50 but you also got to understand the type of machine that would have to do that that machine would have to predict every single outcome whether i pick up a pen or not and then if i drop that pen spin that pen or just hold on to it that computer would have to determine what would happen after that. It would literally have to determine the possibilities of everybody's actions in the entire world by like the nanosecond. Is but anything the, can change? Playing the devil's advocate though, if we were in a simulation, it just could be that our simulation hasn't hasn't reached the technology to run that yet. Whereas the actual But that's what I'm saying. Why would, why could would be... someone run a simulation for that? That's that's well, what I'm trying to get. What do you mean? It's the god I, complex. What do you mean? Yeah. Why do why do people the, play why do people play things like Second Life and The Sims and you know and then the, you have like the Second Life characters where you can't you know you create your character and then you can't like murder or hurt anybody but you just like play this other life and then you can have do you remember that episode of The Office where so what you're saying Dwight, is, is that there's a there's a person or an organization out there that is putting us through a simulation so that way we can that they can feel good about themselves and their god complex no not exactly i mean it's the same way we're running simulations right now or trying to um simulate the big bang we're no, no, trying no, no, to no. figure no, out no, no. Josh, the big bang and how that happened and everything so you know what if there was something that happened in a in a point in history and they're like we need to figure out i mean like if look at today some of the things that are going on in today's society how things are super crazy i mean like very polarized left side right side there's See, a lot but of, that that's you know, what I, that's what i'm trying to say though that mm -hmm. that would be complete mute point in, in in terms of that so the only way i would ever even agree with that ridiculous theory is per, based on jack's you know whatever notion that he's saying that there's someone watching us down right now the only thing i could ever see a simulation happening is to predict our future first of all if they tried to recreate something from the big bang theory to see where humanity made its mistakes th that again wouldn't be possible because then they would have to recreate everything that happened or create a new one because they wouldn't be able to know what happened back then and recreate that exact exactly there's no way they could do that no, no. They could so create I mean, their what, own what world. You do is yes. You create the original. You you put the ingredients in with some different pro, you know, probabilities or whatever, and then you let them go from there, and you observe and report on what's happening. Yeah, but it's that's not that you're telling those things to do do this, this, and this. And I, I don't, I history. don't agree. I don't disagree with you on that, Josh. But what I'm saying is, put if they were to do a simulation of what I did, you know, ten years ago. That's not going to help them in a type of situation now. It, simulations, again, just like you said, we're, we're going on the same line. It's to predict their future to prevent something, right? But a simulation, I feel like, would have to run. The computer would run if we were geniuses, if all three of us were geniuses and we're trying to build ourselves, you know, trying to see, bring humanity to the, you know, brink of the highest technology and sophistication and, you know, as powerful as a human race could be, right? Mm -hmm. We would have to learn from history's mistakes. However, we can't go back in time, you know, what, what, whatever happens. And we can't really create a computer system that would exactly know what happened during that time frame of everybody in the entire world. However, you can create a simulation to, again, it would have to be a powerful enough computer to predict 
every all seven billion and all creatures on the planet about what they would do at that point and the possible things that can happen. Like Doctor Strange in the Avengers, you know, he's sitting there crisscross applesauce mm-hmm. and he's going through and he's like, you know, I've seen 16 million different outcomes and this is yeah. the only one that comes through. That's only because he can actually use that what was it? The time, the the time stone, and he can actually go into the future and live through all of those moments, and then figure out which one is possible. But in order to do that, again, but he went through every single possibility, every single possibility of mm-hmm. one of himself, and then everything happening around him, in order to depict, you know, whether there will be a meteor that hits the planet. It, again, okay. it, well, it's let's observing even use everybody. Doctor Strange as an example here, because how many different simulations did he say he ran, Jack? Oh, no, it was like fourteen. Million. Yeah, fourteen million. Yeah. So in that, there were people that were living in his simulations that were completely conscious, that thought that they were real people. They were going about their lives as real normal people in those simulations, and each time, like they would go on until their timeline ended because of Thanos winning or whatever timeline, you know, Dr. Strange decided to stop it. So what the simulation theory is saying is that if there were 14 million different simulations that Dr. Strange ran and one real one, what are the odds that we're in the real one as opposed to being in one that Dr. Strange was? See, that, that's, that's the only thing that I can that I can give to you guys. So, again, a simulation is going to be a simulation. If it ever does become a thing, it's going to be a computer program. It's mm-hmm. not going to be anything that is going to be like the Matrix. It's not going to be an actual world where people live their lives to observe. The computer is going to run the possibilities yeah. And that is it. It is going to go at however fast. Doctor Strange did that in how long, Jack? Three seconds? Few seconds. Yeah, few, few seconds. seconds. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean that there were 16 million different worlds that happened at the same time with living, breathing people in it. No, he used the time stone to look through kind of like what he did in the actual Doctor Strange movie where he just, but that one, he was going back in time. But what I'm saying is, is that if simulation did exist, it wouldn't create a world where it would have people and then and then they would know you wouldn't observe them it's all about possibility that's the key word there it's the possibility of something happening see the the ridiculous notion of the matrix is that they built a giant machine and put actual people in mm -hmm. their own world yeah but a simulation that the guy different though from like what i said what the simulation theory is. but that's what i'm saying a simulation is going to be a computer processing the moments of what anybody would make at any given time in a matter of seconds or hours or however long it takes for them to figure out what point they want to get to. So if they were like, all right, supercomputer, first test, we want to predict what Donald Trump will eat for lunch today. Then the computer will go, based on my calculations, it looks like he will be fed a Reuben. Mm-hmm. And then that that's what will happen. But there isn't going to be a world simulation created. And then all of a sudden people are going to go and that chef is going to make him a Reuben and go to simulation Donald Trump and feed him that Reuben. And then boom, world ends. No, it, I, it, the only way I think a simulation would ever happen is going to be in the mind of a supercomputer. But that mm-hmm. reads all the possibilities. If that supercomputer creates its own world in his head, first of all, I don't think it would be powerful enough to actually create those kind of things in it. But it can observe and predict the possibility happening based on the mathematics and science of what people do on their daily basis. But they would have to have records of what everybody, they would have to have records of Jack ever since he was born and what he's done with his entire life, what he eats, what he does, what his, uh, what his daily routines are, what your daily routines are, what you no, see. Eat, I don't think I that you need to have that information. No, you 100% need to have that information in order to make an accurate simulation. It doesn't have to. I think that I think you guys are are arguing, not arguing like two. two, You're discussing two separate points of what the simulation could be. Luch, you're talking about like predicting an outcome, whereas Josh is talking about like not predicting anything, but the fact that like. So, for instance, if you play The Sims. You're not predicting what they're going to do or running a program to see what they're going to do. You're literally controlling what they do. You are 
you, or, or maybe not even you, you have it on autopilot and they do what they want, but it's not mm-hmm. like, it's not that the computer system needs to know every little piece of information that happened before to, in order to predict the future. It's that everything around you is not real. The desk isn't real. The food that you, you eat isn't real. The, the things that you drink aren't real. You know, the cl- soft clothes uh, that you feel on your body, that's not, you know, that's not real. Everything is just a, a, a process, a computer process that tells your brain, your consciousness, this is good, this is bad, this is hot, this is cold. This tastes good. This tastes See, bad. But, but the thing is, like in terms of the Matrix, they were people put inside of a simulation, put yeah. inside of a fake world. So, are you trying to say that we ourselves are a fake world? Because if that's the case, and we're not actually put inside pods, living in a simulated world, this is our world. Then, this is what yeah. we know. This is so. This yeah. isn't a simulation. This is this is our world, even if it is due to the God it, complex. But it, but it can be though. Simu- the simulation theory is that it absolutely can it doesn't have to be your de- your definition is like oh well if we're not in a pod somewhere then this is, can't be a simulation if it's not the matrix it can't be a simulation. well it can you know the you know when you again let's go go back to the simplest form of this when you play second life and you create your little online you know avatar mm-hmm. th- that person doesn't know that they're just a computer program he's not in a pod somewhere and his consciousness is there but that computer program acts like you d- carries out whatever you know task you wanted to carry out it does what it does because it's a computer program yeah. so the idea but that, is, that's what i'm saying that's its world it can't yeah. venture out into the regular world no matter how hard it tries no agree of course and not. a simulation is observing what what happens at that moment so even though we're controlling the you know the people that's a game that's a video game that's not a simulation the matrix they never controlled anybody no i think you're getting hung up on the definition of simulation the simulation literally like it, in what the realm of what we're talking about is just the idea that the life that you live and the things that you see and and, and experience aren't actually tangible it's not it's not physical as, as in like your base reality we have a heart, a soul, a mind, as in it's more of everything that you experience is an electro an electrical response to a computer chip. Yeah. And, and okay, honestly, but that, that's... I mean, and that's the thing, like, like I even said in the beginning, that's one of the reasons why I was hesitant to talk about it. Cause like I said, out of any of them, I like the idea of the matrix more just because that seems to be the one that like in the matrix, when Neo first started waking up and he, learned you know about um dodging bullets and you know that they could that there were rules to this world but those rules could be bent and some could be broken that kind of thing i love that idea the one that like i said of of what neil degrasse tyson talks about like i understand his logic behind his explanation for it but then at the same time i don't i don't like that one i don't I don't agree with that one. I'm not sure what it is. Like I said, if it's if it's the rebellious nature in me. I mean, because, yeah, it definitely makes sense that we could get to the point where, I mean, technologically, like people 20 years ago were saying, you know, that no, or what was it, 30 years ago, no one would ever need a personal computer in their house. And now, like, I mean, I'm I'm literally sitting at a table with three computers on it you know, that I'm, I'm doing this podcast from, you know, and the, the processing power in our phones and everything is, is light years above what we have. So the possibility of either, whether it's, you know, people, um, I mean, cause I guess the, it could kind of come down to the whole, if, if we went down like a rabbit hole of consciousness, um, where if you were to actually run a simulation or, or let's say that you started up a game of the Sims and you started playing it, the the npcs or whatever if you and you know put them with enough artificial intelligence in them to be able to to move and carry on their daily life as normal at what point you know could they click over into consciousness compared to just being ai like could we be in the simulation now we're not actually humans we think we think we are but we could just be ai i mean did you guys what what movie was it that was on netflix right the extinction oh but maybe well i <laughs> mean was... like the the whole point in that one and spoiler alert to anyone that hasn't seen it um is the fact that the ai didn't know that they were ai right um and so it was like that was like the big reveal and the twist was the ai were living they 
they knew that people were chasing them, but they didn't know why, but they were being hunted. And then all of a sudden, like they get shot and they're like, Oh crap. I got like wires and shit inside me. I'm not actually a real person, but they didn't realize up until that point, they had all these fake memories implanted in them and all those kind of stuff. Uh, so that's kind of where it, the simulation theory I think is, is a fun thing to kind of discuss, but um there's so many just different options of it that I, I think you almost have to kind of pick a, a specialized division of it um, to discuss. Well, that, yeah, that's that, what I was saying, know. because, I mean, it felt it felt like to me, like listening to you go, you guys go back and forth there for a few minutes that you guys were talking about two separate things and you can't yeah. you can't argue two um, two different definitions of the same word or no theory. no no it what, what I was arguing is that the terms of of what a simulation that you guys are thinking of just I just can't ever find plausible if there was someone out there with a god complex who put us in this we'll say electronic world whatever we'll call this a simulation to sit there and observe with us and and toy with us and go about our daily lives first of all that guy is squandering whatever kind of technological genius that he has in order to play a, uh, a very high definition sim, maybe maybe it's not technologically um, powered. Then you could say spiritual. Then then yeah. God then God is actually uh, the the co founder of EA Games. <laughs> <laughs> well, think about it in this in this way. Like you know, it, we are very close to what Josh said about you know what how close are they to clicking over a person uh, you know a, a, an AI computer into a, a, a living breathing person. I mean, we always talk about like ex machina. You know, you see the, the the robot that Elon Musk made that became a Russian citizen or passed the, you know, the yeah. Turing test, or I don't know if it's passed yet or it's close, but I don't think I so. mean, I mean, things like that. I mean, that's how close we are, you know, like that's how close we are to taking your, your personality or whatever online persona that you've created impulses, decisions, your morality, you know, and putting it into a computer program putting it on a metal frame and all of a sudden there you are walking around. Yeah. You know, and, and it's, yeah, it's still a robot. It's still a computer, but you know, if, if it's programmed with your thoughts and your, um, your feelings on certain issues, like I said, morality, you know, compassion, all of those kinds of things, it's going to act and do things very similarly that, you know, to you. Yeah. So, and I mean, I, I don't think it's too far fetched if you think about it in, in that way that, I mean, while I don't believe that we're in a simulation now, because I just don't think that it's logical, I think that, and it's one of those things where like, even if you, even if it was, I mean, would you really want to know, you know, would you actually want out of it? Because, you know, whenever I, whenever I eat something, it tastes great, you know? But mm-hmm. at the end of the day, we talked about this before, you know, how do I know that what I taste tastes like steak isn't what you taste tastes like chicken? You know, I, there's no way to yeah. Oh, yeah, to actually exactly. know that or colors or, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Like we were raised to, you know, to believe or to see a, the color blue and we call it blue. But all we know is by definition, like that color we're both staring at is named blue we don't Mm -hmm. actually know that the hue you know the actual like tint of that color is the same to me and you yeah no idea we just know what we just know what to call it i agree and i think that when you think about it in in terms like that that's it's very uh it's very unsettling because there's no real way to prove you know what i mean like you can't talk to the dead well, right. until until they more than likely create a machine that allows you to see through someone's eyes. But even then, the even then, it doesn't, even then, it doesn't matter. You're still looking with your own eyes. So even then, even if I look through your eyes, I'd still see what I would see normally. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. So the, you, the only thing the only thing I can say that is even if, even if that was, you know, the case, if what you see is purple, but I see green. Mm-hmm. Right. That's. That again has, you know, it, it's just one of those things where, what what color are you? You know, you look at a you look at a Caucasian male, you look like a, at an African American male, you look at, you know, a, a Hispanic male, like you know, what color do you see him as? And then, but if you say, you know, well, 
you know, the Caucasian, he, he looks, he looks like a light tan. Uh, what? Then does that mean that maybe you see him as purple and we're all walking around as, you know, freaking Oompa Loompas and Teletubbies? Maybe. You never know. You know, there's no way to tell. But the thing, the only thing that I can say of is, is that, yeah, I don't know. That, that just seems like a long, like a long Yeah, like, of course stretch. it's a, of course it's a stretch, but I mean, the, the problem is, and the ultimate crux of it is that. I mean, what do you do to prove it? What are the steps that you take to prove this is a real world? You know, this is real. What I feel yeah. is real. What I see is real. Well, we would with, know. We would know as soon as we we're able to swap consciousness with one another's body. We we would know as soon as we were able to communicate with the dead. <laughs> what happens after you die? Do you just hit the reset button, escape, go back to the lobby, respawn as a new person? I know. Here, here you come. Here you come. Born into so born into the, into the world. So what was your definition? As a baby. Simulation? What is the definition? Okay. What was your simulation? Well, the the, the, dic- the dictionary uh, definition is the production of a computer model, especially for the purpose of study. Okay, um, so that's one of three. There should be two more, right? Yeah, of course. Webster's dictionary has imitation of a situation or process yes. in the action of pretending or deception. Pretending, right? Yeah, of course. Okay, so that's that's where my the only way I could ever see what I was trying to say before is the type of simulation that you guys were talking about. I can never find plausible. I I don't feel it could ever exist. The only way I think the actual an actual simulation, right? Mm-hmm. An actual simulation is of that is the first definition in there to imitate a situation or process. Yeah. Not to actually create a uh, whatever, whatever this <laughs> Sims, real life Sims, whatever. Well, no, I, was, I mean, like I, I said, was... I think a lot of it is, is you, you start things and especially like when, when you're talking about the human race, like your simulation, you could technically start with, one male, one female with the characteristics of a human with, you know, all the different stuff that they know about humans at that point. I mean, we know a lot about humans at this point, but it once, I mean, we're talking about, I mean, let's say it's, it's 5,000 years in the future, you know, that they are able to figure this stuff out. They're going to know a whole ton about people at that point. So you start with one man, one woman on this thing called earth and they go run program. And then boom. And I mean, it may be running at speeds much, much faster than this. But of course, so you're trying to say that's we're not going to know like our our, then boom, the world our world's not going to be sped up or anything like that. We're going to continue living things as normal. But then from the outside could be watching it at a completely different speed happening and go, OK, well, I mean, because. I mean, just out of curiosity, it would be extremely interesting to see different points in history and what could have happened or or what happened when you know the first tadpoles crawled out of the water and humans started to to grow into you know the Australia, australopithecus or whatever and you know and then neanderthals and humans and that kind of thing like that would be a, a completely fascinating thing to see um and i mean there were there would be it would be really hard to be able to figure out like how much information like how credible would information be but i'm sure like i don't know i mean i was talking about the other day with my parents like if you sent me back in time i feel like i would be so worthless because i would talk to them about all these amazing things in the future like cars and tvs and phones and they're like cool how do you do it and i'm like i don't don't fucking know know. like I, i don't understand i don't understand for the life of me how a telephone is able to record my voice send it into space and send it back down on someone else's phone instantly and it comes out sounding exactly like me not even just the words coming out let me let me let you let me let you in on a little secret it ain't going to space yeah 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 josh josh Josh. (laughs) cell phone tower what whatever it's doing i i don't understand a landline telephone and how a wire can carry a void like what makes sense to me is the tin cup with a string going over to my neighbor's house that i can picture be how the voice can vibrate now then you understand hold on hold on on. no it's it's so much different one going it's it's like it's like i'm talking to a couple of monkeys right now okay you guys ever (laughs) run into a spider web those aren't spider webs those are actual micro threads that connect each phone to one another okay (laughs) 
And then when you talk into that, the way the threads vibrate, okay, and it sends your, your what you're saying to the other phone. There's no such thing as spiders. It's just micro threads that connect. Like like back in the day when the phones were first invented speaking with two of, cups and a string. Speaking of monkeys. <laughs> I was totally kidding, by the way, guys. You are monkeys. You're, no, you're, I mean, you're, I'm, you're, I'm you're just gross. saying, like, that kind of stuff, there's so much stuff in this world that I don't understand. So trying to talk about the the intricacies of what they could do with simulation or anything like that, that's that's way out of my pay grade. Like, I, I'm not <laughs> arguing that kind of stuff. You know, so the, <laughs> the only thing I could say, if this was a simulation, right, mm -hmm. there is an indoor and there is an outdoor somewhere. There is always a console. There has to be a means of way to examine, control, and adjust mm -hmm. in a simulation, right? You can't Maybe. just you can't no. just create something. That if if it was even spiritual, right? If it was, there's a console, and whoever finds that console, they're going to be a divine chancellor of hmm. the universe. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I'm the, I mean, like to me, at least, like I said, where an explanation like like Tyson talks about it, it makes sense to me just because of technological advances and the way that things have gone. I mean, when we look at what we have now, I mean, any of the things that we use on a daily basis none of it was stuff that they used back a hundred years ago. I mean, like almost every single thing that we use is changed over the past 100 years. And so like, it's hard, I think for, for even my brain to comprehend what even the next 10 years is going to look like. Like I couldn't imagine back when I was a kid, I mean, some of the stuff, you know, I think like I, when I picture the future, I picture things like, you know, the iPad, um, having a, a flat handheld device in front of you that you could see watch videos and stuff maybe, maybe more with holograms that i think i remember you know like picturing as a kid mm -hmm. um i feel like that kind of stuff is like it's it's here but probably not to the point where it's like a, a household item um maybe more teleportation jumping through wormholes and those kind of thing but mm -hmm. i think the kind of stuff that the future is going to hold for us is so much more insane than I think most of us even realize like what it could even be. Yeah. So, I mean, I, and I agree with you, but I ultimately, I don't think that our technological advancements now in our current state help or don't help the argument of it being a simulation or not. I mean, I feel like, yeah, we're, we're doing great to create our own simulations to, to get to the point where we're going to be crossing the lines of fit virtual reality and augmented reality, mm. you know, on a daily basis, you know, and it's predicted that before too long, you know, more people are going to be living in a virtual world than, you know, outside of it, kind of like Ready Player One and, you know, all of that. And, and while I can see that and I can, I can envision it and see that as a, a possibility, mm. I don't think that the fact that we're that close to that technology means that we're in one, you know? And again, like going back to, you know, what I was saying before, I was just more, more playing devil's advocate just for the sake of it. Um, I, yeah. like I said, I don't, I don't actually believe that we're in a simulation. And I think that our advancement of technology in and of ourselves just proves that we are moving away from the human element. You know, the fact that we don't have to talk to people, face to face in any capacity if we really don't want to mm -hmm. but we'd rather interact with them virtually only further proves that this is where we're headed not so much that we're in one now currently mm -hmm. but that we're headed to a point where you know i go plug myself in and then i go to work and play and leisure and i never have to leave my house because yeah. again at the end of the day you know those when we feel pain, pleasure, accomplishment, those are all electrical impulses, right? Mm -hmm. So if you go find a girlfriend online right now in an online game, you know, maybe whatever that new VR chat game or whatever, where everybody just goes and hangs out and like, you know, talks with their virtual avatars, right? Oh God, don't even get me started on that game. Right. But my point is, is that you Wait, go is on there. Is there a real one like that? Yes. Yeah. And it's yeah, toxic. It's don't chat. go in there, Josh. You'll never come but, out. But listen, this so... <laughs> <laughs> so the idea is 
is that you can go in there and you have conversations, you know, make friendships, relationships, whatever, on, virtually. But like, say you want to get frisky with your online girlfriend, there is no electronical impulses to, you know, feel her touch or kiss, right? <laughs> oh, you know what yeah, I'm we saying? Don't have it just yet. And yeah. that brings right. us to our first sponsor. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Fleshlight 3000. Your next step into the virtual porn world has come to fruition. <laughs> no, that's going to be the first thing for VR, guarantee you. When it becomes like super like real. But I will I, tell you what, really if there's ever if there if I ever get the chance to hop into virtual Skyrim with my wife where we can take on dragons together and feel myself thum then yeah, I'm going to take that. Yeah. I, yeah. I I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm very interested in, in that kind of stuff. Um, like I guess saying that I, I think a lot, if we're really discussing simulation, um, especially in the way of what Tyson's talking about it, um, would be differentiating <laughs> AI consciousness with actual human consciousness. Um, and the fact of like, so let's say that Tyson's theory is 100% correct. We get to the point where we can run simulations on from the Big Bang ne up Neil to this Tyson point or, now. or Tyson, the inventor of the chicken nugget? Uh, both. Both or, have talked about this. They're on the same team on this. Mike Tyson. Yeah. <laughs> they, it's called Tyson, Tyson, Tyson and Brothers. <laughs> but no i mean just so let, let's say that you you came up with that simulation you wanted to do from big bang all the way to now and just study how the world changed and, and what different events went on and all this kind of stuff those people that are running in that simulation um you know they would be running off of basically artificial intelligence you would program them the way that you wanted them to think and, and act and stuff like that but at, at what point would they cross over from being the artificial intelligence side to you know being conscious or you know like so, said, so, let, could, so let me so be... let me so let me get let me ask you guys that so the computer i was talking about the one that could predict right mm -hmm. everything and predict where movements going so let's say that machine gets bigger super big to where you can put yourself in that machine and live an entire life right in a matter of minutes mm -hmm. right this this is like a home thing you so plug you, in yeah, at home. So you're at your house. You jump into this thing. It shuts. You can spend a year. You, you can spend a year in Tahiti for mm -hmm. five dollars. Feel exactly what you would feel if you went to actual Tahiti. Spend a year in there, but it's only been three seconds in the real world. Would you guys do that? So what? I mean, is that even a question? Yeah, I, I what think. Are the, what are the side effects, Doctor? Are, are there <laughs> any negative side effects to this? Who cares? What do you mean? Like if, it, if it's okay, going to kill me, jump, in, if, jump into if it's a gonna dream kill world, me, spend a year or whatever the, it is in your dream world of whatever you want. And then all of a sudden you just, the game ends and you don't wake up like, Oh, that's terrible. Like, hell no. I just want <laughs> like a freaking boss, like having fun. Like I, I don't, mm, nah. I, I don't know. If I come back and I have like some weird cancer or something like that, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> well okay well that that's what that's what i'm saying though like it like i could that's obviously thousands of years from now i don't even think that kind of technology would even be possible in the next hundred years um never say never, never. i do elon musk next feature <laughs> no, featuring I like that that's definitely in the future. um and i just think that ultimately like i said the whether or not we can build a computer to predict outcomes, you know, Dr. Strange style, or look back and see like, oh, this is how we could have run this world differently and change things. Mm -hmm. I think the only thing that future simulation does any positive uh, effect or any positive, you know, outcome is when, when it comes to weather and geological mapping. So like being able okay. to fix global warming or the holes in the ozone or, you know, whatever it might be that we need to do to fix the planet, whether it might be from, you know, uh, animal depopulation, you know, forest, 
you know, deforestation, you know, mm-hmm. water levels rising, heat levels rising, all of those different things. What, what, you know, being able to simulate, you know, hundreds of years to see what's going to happen if we do X, if we do Y, if we do Z, you know what yeah. I mean? I think that that's the, really the only, the only uh, beneficial outcome of any sort of simulation when it, when you enter, when the humans come into it, when that's you're trying to simulate, saying. when you're trying, just hold on, when you're trying to, uh, throw in any human element into a simulation, humans are too unpredictable, which I think then leads back to, um, you know, why I think that we, there's no way that we could be in one right now. Uh, just because I, 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 I wasn't, I wasn't arguing with you before. I, I was telling you that you guys were arguing two different points, which is what you were. Doing. But that, that's what I'm saying. The only way a simulation could be possible if, if it knows the chaos of the way the human mind works. Right, but that simulate the definition of that what you just said is not what simulation Josh was talking about. There's because you're talking about a, a simulation of simulating an outcome, and Josh is mm-hmm. talking about a virtual space of being like this is not real. Imagine going to that little the VR place. No, he, playing, but you were playing a he game was saying of, of to team be death studied. Match. To be studied. That's that's what he was talking about. To be studied. The simu- the simulation was created so it, they could study it. Yes, but that has nothing to do with future. That's like running as that's like running a simulation and then looking back on it. That's not looking like uh, I'm going to use this. But to why would what's they study happen. it though? They would study it to help them benefit themselves in the future. They wouldn't study it to be like, oh, well, now no. we know why they didn't use the banana. No, no, I don't agree because I think that the God theory and the God complex of a simulation isn't the fact that he needs to study. He created humans to have free will to choose to worship him or not you know what i mean and i think that that's ultimately that part of the simulation that you're that he's talking about like here i have the god complex and i'm going to create humans and they're going to live their measly little lives and do they thank me for everything good that they have or do they you know hail satan kind of thing (laughs) yeah (laughs) and those are two separate things those are two very very separate things I, there's just this rabbit hole goes so deep. Um, <laughs> Josh, did you take your meds today? <laughs> no. Okay. no. Uh, man, it, like I, like I said, I, I wasn't even arguing that, you know, that I believe we're in a, a simulation. Like you said, you leaned yes towards the Matrix one more towards the <laughs> other. Listen, listen, buddy. I am not laying in some pod somewhere shaved from head to toe with no, cords and, and all over me in some vile, you're, viscous liquid. you're getting liquid. caught up on the details, okay? You're getting caught up. Never never once did I, I go, man, I feel like there's something just poking me in the back of the head. Maybe I'm in a simulation. No, it's the kind <laughs> of thing of that we discuss it all the time that you think about something and it literally happens all the time it's coincidence. You, you know whether it's coincidence or coincidence by definition is is what can someone read me the definition of coincidence chives chives has been slacking for like we, he, we've given him like the holidays off but he just like stayed in tahiti right. in that simulation <laughs> yeah if, right? if someone could be, read me the nice. definition of coincidence because I don't know. Right. Let, the definition for so coincidence is a remarkable concurrence of events or circumstances without apparent causal connection. Okay. Does it say how often it can happen before it changes over from coincidence to <laughs> whatever the next thing is? Because that's normally where things start getting weird, right? Where scientists, their the hair stands up on the back of their necks and they're like, all right, this can't just be a coincidence. We've seen it happen over and over and over again. And that's what I feel like happens in my life all the time, that there are things that just keep happening that I'm like, I feel like someone's playing a joke on me. Like that I'm I'm on like the Truman show or whatever, like maybe I'm not at a Mm. simulation, but I'm in the Truman show and this is all being videotaped right now. And there's people in an outside Mm. world watching and they're having fun you know, and they're cheering for me. They're like, "Oh, Josh, you know, he he finally started his own podcast, and this is this is going to be a great episode. Tune in to season thirty three. You know, like coming up on season thirty four on March the seventh. You know, like <laughs> the, it's. I'm telling you, there's so much weird stuff. And I mean, I don't know. Do you guys just 
I mean, Jack, you and I have had enough conversations sure. to know, like, yes, I'm mainly bullshitting that I don't actually think that I'm plugged into a machine. But I think that some of that may be getting caught up on the details of how we're actually connected to the Matrix. I think just <laughs> the fact that there is some weird stuff going on in this world that not everything is what it seems. No, and I would agree with you in that I'll, aspect, I'll but I think there. that that... I think that that actually supports more of the free will versus not free will argument that it does for a simulation because whenever things like that happen, it's almost like, okay, like, am I really on my own path? Am I really, did I really get here on my own or am I being guided by the hand, mm -hmm. you know, along where I'm, I'm headed? And I think that that's, that's, that supports more of that conversation than it does like, oh, well, this is simulation and none of this is real. Um, you know, when we, we talk about, oh, there's a glitch mm -hmm. in the matrix, like, have I ever, I don't know if I did, if I talked about it for Halloween or if I've ever brought it up before, I know I told Josh about it. But did I ever tell you about the, and Luch, you can chime in, about mm -hmm. the time when I saw a glitch in the matrix driving home from work oh, and, God. The three, and the three ladies. Did I ever tell you about this? Oh, I do remember you telling me this. I know, I know I told Josh. Did I ever tell you about this, Luch? Guys, don't listen to Jack. He he accidentally found himself on a legally blonde shoot and he's never been able to live it down ever since. No, 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 no. I didn't tell you about this, right? <laughs> no, you did. You did. Okay. All right. So I'm driving home from work on a major highway. Get off the exit. I'm pulling up to the light. Uh, I'm pulling up in the middle lane. It's a three lane highway. And to my right, I'm pulling past a white Corolla. And I just so happen to like, you know, I like to be aware of my surroundings. So I'm looking around, I'm coming to a stop. I look over and there's a middle-aged white lady with her left hand and a white iPhone up to her ear talking. Okay. She's in a white Corolla, Toyota Corolla, talking on an iPhone, left ear, hand, right hand on the steering wheel, sitting there. Mm -hmm. I'm coming to a stop. Next car in front of her, oddly another white car. Another middle-aged white lady, <laughs> left hand with her white iPhone up to her ear, right hand on the steering wheel, white Corolla. Third car in line, no lie, white Corolla, middle-aged white lady, left hand with an iPhone up to her ear, right hand on the steering wheel. I did, no lie, three to four double takes sitting at this light, like shaking my head, rub my eyes one time, like, wait. <laughs> What's happening? All yeah. three at the same light, the same car. They weren't all wearing the same outfit and they weren't all the same woman. Yeah. But boom, boom, boom. All middle-aged white ladies, left hand with the iPhone to the ear, right hand on the steering wheel. Steering wheel. Explain it. Dude, I, it's just, I know, like we say, it's just coincidence. Let's just call it a day and go home and we'll just forget about it because it's just on the shoot for legally blonde three it's <laughs> obvious is that one of those things where it's like the truman show and they're like they got the mic they're 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 they got the phone on there and the producers are like oh my god oh my god he's there we didn't know he was coming this way he took a wrong turn oh my god he's gonna notice he's gonna notice and Dude. i'm just like looking around like what the hell? well see oh, and man. maybe this just talks about or just shows you like how messed up my mind is when i first saw the truman show that's all i believe my life was for like the next couple of years <laughs> then i saw the matrix and then i was like okay the matrix explains things a little bit better so i'm gonna believe the matrix and that's what i've been on since like i first saw that movie that came out but like yeah, the truman show was like beautiful it was it was so good at at like that kind of movie of being able to make you question your own reality and all, all your friends and your family and everything like that was, Oh, I loved it so much. Yeah. The matrix came out in 1999. You're telling me that for the past 20 years, you've been stuck on the matrix. There, what else has explained life as well as that? Um, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no other movie has made me go like that makes as much sense i mean like like i said i i know it is a fun thing i enjoy it and that's where most of my love for it comes from because it's some crazy ideas and if someone had a gun pointed to my head and we're like you know if i shoot you right now do you think you're gonna wake up like in your little matrix pod no at the end of the day i don't but at the same time 
I'm tired of freaking coincidences and just sitting here and ignoring <laughs> them going like, oh, it's nothing. I'm just going to forget about it. Like, I like to bring them up. I, and, and that's normally what I do. If I have a really heavy coincidence hit, I'll text you guys. And normally I'll post it in Discord or I'll text you, Jack, and I'll, I'll be like, dude, the fucking Matrix is real. You know, and I just like saying that because it helps explain the story that I'm about to tell you. Or, you know, if I text you, go, dude, the freaking Matrix is real. You know that I'm about to tell you a crazy coincidence yeah. story. You know, yeah. I, that's that's my main love for it and everything is because it's there's some things in this world that happen that are too unexplainable that my mind can only go about explaining them using Matrix references. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, again, I just think that ultimately it's one of those things where does it really matter right we talked about like a bunch of different things free will versus not can you prove it yes no does it matter at the end of the day like if it is or isn't like you're still living your life out you're still making your choices whether you think they're your own or not oh yeah i mean exactly it's like the fact if, if i found out tomorrow i was in the matrix it's like okay, like, I don't know how to get out of it. Like, my, my life doesn't change. I still have work to do tomorrow. I still have kids that need to be fed. Like, would you would you look to get out of it or would you look to change it? So. If you knew that your world was malleable, that you can actually change it with the click of a button. Okay. And I'm not, I'm not talking, I'm talking like everything, bro. I'm talking you wink and all of a sudden there is the screen, the console, right? And you could, you could move a slider and it adds 200 pounds to you or you lose 30 pounds and you make your, you scale. Oh, so you're your making abs. it too easy. Yeah. I mean, with something like that, hundred percent, I would change. No, no, no. This is everything, bro. I'm talking everything. It gives you control of everything. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Now I'm not saying you... alt F4. <laughs> and then you die yeah but no i mean you're, you're talking to a kid who when i saw dragon ball z for the first time i tried shooting kamehameha's out of my hands or when i saw star wars i tried using the force to move items around the room like i've just, like, like i've never wanted to believe that this reality that we have here is as much as we can get i want to to believe that that there's ways that we can change and manipulate things in this world outside of our normal. See, human but that that's that the thing, Josh. Like you can't bring up the past. The force was discovered and was proven real years ago. Mm -hmm. It's not our fault that you can't control it. Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm trying to learn how to control it. I wasn't saying it wasn't real because I couldn't. I'm saying I'm trying to learn how. Yeah, I mean, I, they, I mean, I can't even remember the last time that I've even bought like a like a table or something. Just all of my items are floating. <laughs> I don't even have to touch the keyboard. I just mind press it. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding, Josh. I'm just, I'm just teasing you. I can only move like a pencil at a time. Well, that's the thing. I know the whole reason we're doing this podcast is because you guys are nerds like me, and I guarantee that both you guys tried bending spoons <laughs> after watching The Matrix or tried move, picking up something using the Force. I guarantee it. And if you didn't, then you're kicked off the podcast as of this moment. <laughs> First of all, everyone has, no matter who you are. Yes, and uh, exactly. second of all, to one-up you, when I watched Dragon Ball Z, Gundam, Digimon, everything, right? <laughs> so... I went outside and pretended that I had an imaginary Digimon, okay, while I got uh, blue balloons, right, and uh, blew them up to where they were, they would float, but they wouldn't go up too high, and then I would uh, put the balloon inside my palms, so that way when I let go of it, it would go, <laughs> and then it would go out and, and fly, okay? Nice. <laughs> That's not a joke Real either. Nice. Oh. Okay. I I very rem I don't know why you brought that you saying that brought that up to me, but when I lived in Virginia, I remember doing that in my backyard. <laughs> well, see, we used to I make bow it. and arrows with my dad and shoot them at trash cans. I, every time we go to Michael's, I ask my wife if I can get one of the wooden sticks so I can make a bow and arrow. <laughs> <laughs> I can shoot them at some trash bags outside. That's awesome. That's what that's what I would do, um, but ultimately, so 
coming coming back around full circle, right? So yes, please, Josh, you're still leaning on the fence of yes for for simulation, right? As long as it's like Matrix style, it's. I, I would say my the best way for me to explain it is I don't believe we understand fully what we're in currently. <laughs> I think that we may think that this is like some normal world i think that we're we aren't able to see everything that that we're supposed to be able to at this point maybe maybe we're not supposed to be able to but i'm saying i think that there's more going on than than we know i agree with you but i don't agree with you for the same reasons that's we're not in a simulation (laughs) (laughs) yeah i don't think so either um, ultimately, I, I don't think. And I think that, again, I think that we're very close to crossing the line of uh, artificial intelligence into simulation. And that mm-hmm. in our lifetime, we may even see full immersion of consciousness into virtual reality. Mm-hmm. I think that, that that may be a thing that we see. But I don't think that that further proves that we're in a simulation now. Yeah. Just so you know, guys, as soon as this uh, episode ends, um, I'm going to get up from my chair. I'm going to walk to my bathroom and then I'm going to click my shower tiles in a pattern. And then it's going to open up a corridor that leads me into this gigantic spherical room. And then all of a sudden, TV screens will start lighting up of everybody's lives. And then I'm just <laughs> going to put my hands together and just. <laughs> Wait, you have that same room? That's weird. What? I thought I was the only one that had that room. And then just cuts. Cuts to black. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Um, anyway. No, that's Ben. That's Ben. Is it? Oh, yeah. I, I think that uh, that's a good stopping place, actually, for this uh, rabbit hole, this tornado rabbit hole that we can just keep diving down and down and down into. Um, I, I don't... The the final boss eluded us again, I think. Uh, I don't really think we put him down in in level 17, and that's why he came back for us in level 19. But I think that we we went around in circles in in his uh, deception. I don't know. I mean, I I think that that we had problems all really being able to communicate where we were all coming from and getting on the exact same page with things. But I think for the, the most part that we all agree that... The simulation, as far as what is the called the simulation theory, that is the most popular simulation theory out at this point, none of us agree with that. Subscribe to, um, yeah. Yeah, that that's basically... Speaking of like, subscribe, uh-huh. <laughs> please subscribe to us. We need yes. it. <laughs> um, <laughs> and also speaking of, I don't know what, I was just going to segue into the fact that... N- Neil deGrasse Tyson is a nut job, and that's my opinion, and <laughs> I'm sticking to it. Does that mean he's the final boss? I, I was going to say, he could be the final boss, and I would gladly... Are you just hating on him because he, he declassified Pluto as a planet? No, no. I, declass- <laughs> I, 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 I hate on him because he... Did you know that he, this this is this is one of his re- recent things? This is aside from his simulation theory. Uh-huh. Uh, he said recently that he thinks the Earth is pear-shaped. Pear shaped. Yes, I have not heard this. That well, it's skinny in the top and, it, and it's it. oblong. That it's oblong it, towards the bottom. Oh no, I'm gonna have to look that up. You're gonna have yeah. to send me a link for that because no, I'm not. I'm not familiar he, with that. He he's all. a certifiable clown. I'm just gonna throw. I mean, that if out Neil deGrasse Tyson says it, it's obviously true. Yeah. Well, and that's I mean, it's I mean, the main reason pear-shaped. I was bringing it up is because, like I said, when we were talking about simulation, I wanted to make sure that I knew the most common. Um, use definition and topic of simulation he yeah, for was sure. the most popular video of course on youtube that i found um going along with simulation theory and so i wanted to see what he had to say about it and so that therefore like when we have our listeners that are listening and they go oh this is based on you know a podcast on simulation if they wanted to do research that i was hoping that i went to the same place that they did so that we're you know on the same page discussing things. So I don't want to, you know, yeah. get off on something no, for sure. that, uh, you know, everyone's not, you know, understanding you're on the same page on kind of thing. Yeah. And I mean, like, you know, Neil deGrasse Tyson saying that um, 
the world is pear shaped. You know, it's like almost as crazy as the people who think the world's flat. Am I right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a not what do you think, as Jeff? popular theory. <laughs> For sure, hundred um, percent. He says as his eyes move back and forth. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson can be our final boss, but I, I think that he's just the minion, but final boss. And I, I think, think I think he's more of a of a TV personality than an actual boss. He's like he's like he goes through he goes through his notebook and is like, "What shall I talk about today?" Yeah. Oh, the world is actually a pear. A pear. Yeah. I like pears. Uh, shout out to all my pears. I like pears. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to all my, my pears. Um, anyways, that's going to wrap it up for this week on simulation. I hope you enjoyed. Um, from all of us at the Bonus Level Podcast, please follow us on all social medias, and I hope you have a great week. Goodbye, friends. Later, taters. Later, taters. Later, taters. Later, taters. Later taters. Later taters. Later taters. Later taters.